Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Laura with Switch Pros, and I wanted to actually do a quick video on some of the frequently asked questions. These are questions that many of you have and maybe haven't stumbled upon them on our website. And if you need to check back on them, just so you know, you can go find them on our website at www.switchpros.com under the Contact Us tab. One of the first key questions that we get is, do I have to connect my ignition wire? The answer is simply yes. The system needs to see 12 volts to power up. So, no matter how you slice it, you need to find a 12 volt ignition on accessory source. Your next question would probably be, how do I know if I've chosen an appropriate circuit? Well, let me tell you. So, for one, the backlighting on the switch panel will come on and stay on while the key is in the ignition position. If it comes on and stays on, even after you've turned the key off, you've not chosen an appropriate circuit because now you're feeding 12 volts into your system full time. The other way to know is right here on the power module. There are three LED indicators that are essentially troubleshooting lights. I get lots of phone calls about that staying on, is that okay? Yes, it's a good thing if we're talking about the bottom light. So there are three bars here, just to the left of where the communications cable plugs in. That bottom light indicates that it's seeing 12 volts and the system will wake up. Now, one of the things to consider is this. If you're going to Bluetooth connect and operate remotely, you don't need to leave your keys in the ignition, therefore you won't have backlighting. Your, your system will stay awake and you'll be able to control it remotely and you will see the orange LED indicators, which are above the switches. When you're operating remotely and you turn a light on or any other accessory, it'll show on your app screen that it's live and it will also have a corresponding LED indicator on your touch panel. If you're connected remotely by Bluetooth device, your backlighting will not come on. Our assumption is if you're not in the vehicle, you don't need it. One of the most critical questions we get asked and one that people seem to want to avoid is what do I do with my ground wire? Your ground wire is actually the black wire with the ring terminal on the end. Without fail, please, please, please connect that to the negative terminal on the battery. The reason is that the battery acts as a giant capacitor and it protects your system from electrical noise, um, any other kinds of disruptions. And also if you try going to a chassis ground and then there's uh, exposure to the elements, or you have a bad connection, it will disrupt proper operation of your system. So if you do nothing else right, make sure you get the connection for the ignition signal and the ground wire. So many phone calls we get uh, are describing that there's some sort of cryptic behavior with the output and it's always traceable to the ground wire. Next big question we get is how do I mount the power module? I know it's super tempting to emulate what you see on the internet and lay this bad boy straight on its back with the connector pointing straight up at the sky like this. We ask that you not do that. The reason is this. This connector, though it is automotive rated and it's IP67, it still is going to be exposed to the elements of water collecting on the back where the wires enter the connector. Over time, we don't know if that could do damage. If you'll notice, none of the connectors under your hood of your vehicle from the factory are laying straight up, pointing to the sky. They're all on their side or at some sort of an angle to allow for runoff. So, we like to see this power module either mounted vertically on the fender, on the firewall, on the side of the battery, on some other plate, but refrain from mounting it this direction. It'll just save you from problems in the future. So one of the burning questions is, should I use a fuse block or power distribution block to connect my accessories? Simply put, there's no reason to. Why? Because this power module here is actually solid state. It's fully sealed. So why open up a solid state system to potential harm from the elements? It just doesn't make sense to us. Here's what we've done. In your installation kit that comes with the system, we've included heat shrinkable butt spices. Here's how these work. You insert one of our leads into the end of the heat shrinkable butt splice. You crimp, you take the hot lead from your accessory, insert it into the other end, you crimp, and then you use a heat tool, heat this up, and this will shrink and actually form a watertight non-corrosive seal around the wire. If you're good at soldering, even better. We suggest you strip back some of the insulation, slide some heat shrink tubing down on one side, solder the connections together, and then cover it with heat shrink tubing. 
that's ideal because that keeps those connections watertight and non-corrosive. It doesn't make them susceptible to the elements, water, or anything else that may go on under the hood. Do you need relays or fuses? Simply put, no. Our power module houses eight individual automotive MOSFETs. Each one controls one circuit on your switch panel system. These protect for overcurrent and over temperature conditions. Now, basically, if you're going to install a compressor, we want to make sure that it is protected in some way or another with a relay. Many of the aftermarket compressors have a built-in relay within the housing. Many have it in the wire harness that's included with the accessory. What we're looking to do there is either protect the system from seeing a load that's too high for this, what the circuit is rated or an inductive load. We don't want to see spikes come into the system and so you'll want to use a relay in cases of things like compressors, fans, anything that's going to create some sort of an, a, a spike on the way in. Is it necessary to connect the pink or the white wires, also known as either the lights wire or trigger two and trigger one? No, you don't. Those are used for things like if you want to use a factory signal to then activate something that's being powered by the Switch Pro. So let's say something like you want your light bar to come on when you're off road and you hit your high beams. You can actually wire it so that you can send a signal that anytime you activate your high beams, it will actually turn on your rooftop light bar. Rest assured, you can't drive around town with that on, so there is a way to toggle it on and toggle it off depending on what if you're on highway or off highway. Um, there's specific information in the directions about that. So, do you get legends with your system? Yes, we include 100 in the horizontal orientation and it's the 100 most commonly requested legends. They're all polycarbonate and they have adhesive on the back and they're a perfect fit for your switch panel. If you need them in vertical, give us a call. We're happy to swap them out for you or we can sell you a separate pack, whatever works best for you. Can we do custom legends? We cannot. Unfortunately, we can't do custom legends that relate only to your project because we can't do one-offs. The production company simply won't allow us to. We sometimes get questions about why is someone seeing a flashing orange LED indicator? That would be one of these up above the switch. What that's indicating is that circuit either has its short in the wiring or it's got an overcurrent or over temperature condition. What will happen is the LED indicator that corresponds with that output is going to flash three times and then shut off. It's going to shut the light off, it's going to shut the circuit down. It doesn't impact any of the other circuits in the system. But what it's telling you is that you either need to hunt down that there's a short in the wiring or that maybe your load is excessive. Um, so that's, that's a real easy thing to trace. It tells you exactly where to go and uh, you, you know, hopefully you're back up on the road and running as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna wrap up. Those are the dozen or so most common questions that we get. Um, again, those are accessible on our website at www.switchpose.com under the Contact Us tab. Um, if you have something that's outside the scope of these, please feel free to call us. We're always here to help. The number here is 949-581-2991. Thanks for tuning in.